They were coming for her, but Faith wasn't in the mood to go anywhere. Not today. 21, 22, 23. She mumbled, counting the white ceiling tiles for the 50th time that morning. Compulsively, she rubbed her hand up the back of her head, feeling the unfamiliar stubble. Since she was locked up again, and hadn't seen a mirror in weeks, she figured it looked like a crew cut now. A couple months ago, she dyed her long caramel brown hair too dark and hated it. Her radical response was to shave her head. After the novelty wore off, she knew it wouldn't make any difference. Jet black, platinum blonde. She was the same damaged goods, no matter what the package looked like on the outside. Unable to concentrate, Faith lost count of the tiles. One, two. Try, try again, she muttered as she folded her hands behind her head. Fail, fail again. Three, four. A key in the lock made Faith raise her head from the stiff mattress. She scanned the room for something to throw. The room was as small as a prison cell and arranged like one. A single bed was bolted to one wall so a guard could peer through the ten-inch square unbreakable window in the door and easily check on the occupant. A one-piece metal toilet with no lid and a small matching sink were mounted on the other wall. The lock clicked, keys jangled, and the metal door swung open. When Faith saw Titus filling the doorway, her shoulders slumped. Titus was built like a small mountain, six foot six and over 300 pounds. But it wasn't his size that made her stand down. She'd taken on bigger men. No, it was the big grin on his broad face. Good morning, Faith. His deep voice made the toilet bowl chime like a bell struck by a hammer. His Sudanese accent was thick, but his words were slow and well enunciated. Would you please accompany me? He stepped into the room and held the door open with one large arm. When Faith didn't budge, he reminded her, You are meeting with Dr. Rogers. And he added, This will be a great visit for you. Scowling, Faith stepped forward, pulling up her hospital pants as she slipped through the doorway. When did you get psychic powers? She snapped. Titus's laugh echoed in the hallway. <laughs> no, not psychic, hopeful. I stay positive. As always, he spoke with conviction. Faith lowered her head and kept walking. Hope. That was the last thing she was looking for. Right now, all she wanted was out. But Faith knew the only way out of this place was through the man she was about to see. Until he certified her not a danger to society, she'd stay behind locked doors, peering through dirty, mesh-covered windows. Titus stopped at the last locked door. He paused with his key card just out of range of the door sensor. Sounding like a pharaoh issuing a decree, he said, You will have a great visit. He swiped the card and opened the door. Dr. Rogers's office was the only room Faith had seen in this building that wasn't all white. Here, the walls were a soft green, and a square of pale gray carpet covered the center of the floor. Two leather chairs faced each other in the middle of the rug, this was the only room in the place where Faith didn't feel like a zoo animal on display. Dr. Rogers entered. Faith didn't dislike him, though not for lack of trying. His white medical coat, worn open to reveal a sedate white shirt, blue tie, and gray trousers, looked too big for his small frame and made Faith think of a child playing dress-up and his chunky black glasses enlarged his eyes so he seemed constantly surprised or startled. He reached out to shake Faith's hand, but then seemed to think better of it, and instead motioned for her to sit. Faith remained standing, not out of defiance, so much as confusion. Did he believe her? Or not? <laughs>